Hi there. Jennifer Elizabeth Masters here. You know, everyone wants love. To feel love, to be loved, to be accepted, to be included. It is part of the human experience. It is what we all long for and desire. However, <laughs> the way the game has been skewed is that when we don't love and accept ourselves, when we feel insecure, when we are longing and needy, like love me, love me, love me, if we're looking for that outside of ourselves to fill us up, we will find the opposite. We attract what we are. In other words, the energy we hold in our bodies is what we attract. We can only attract slightly higher and slightly lower than our vibration. That is the way this game was skewed. It was set up this way so that our relationships mirror back to us what we hold in our hearts. So I'm going to repeat this. <laughs> the energy we hold in our hearts, the vibration that we hold, you know, if we feel insecure, if we are needy, we will attract someone who is at slightly higher or slightly lower vibration. And typically, if we're insecure, we will attract someone else who doesn't feel good about themselves and is likely going to be jealous, possibly abusive, manipulative, passive aggressive. Why? Because when we're insecure, we're afraid to speak our truth. We're afraid to say what we truly need and what we truly want. We're afraid to say, no, don't treat me that way. We just take it because we want to be loved. And only when we feel secure in ourselves and are able to speak our truths, are lined up with our chakras to the truth of our being, do we attract this higher love, the love that is also awakened, also enlightened with the open heart. And that is why we must, we must heal the trauma because as long as we are filled with guilt, self-loathing, insecurity, self-hatred, if we can't make decisions, if we feel like we've been rejected and abandoned, that is what we attract. We keep mirroring, <laughs> the relationships keep mirroring back to us the energy that is unresolved within us. And so <laughs> that is the game of life. It is, it is designed this way so that as we evolve, we become this higher vibrating being. Our heart starts to flower when we lovingly accept ourselves, when we stop hating everyone, when we have forgiveness for everyone that has hurt us, then we have let go of the pain, the sorrow, the suffering, the guilt, and the shame. And so that is what we are here to do. We are here to resolve the past, to move through the trauma, not to stay stuck in this insecure place. We are meant to be joyful, happy beings that manifest in the moment because our vibration is high. And we only have to think a thought and we receive what it is we think about. So I'm going to go over this one more time. Mirrors in the, in the world are our relationships, the people we come in contact with. Now we don't have to be in a relationship with someone to have the mirror show up for us. It could be the clerk in the grocery store or in the in the department store. It could be someone who cuts you off on the highway. It could be a relative or your children that show you, oh, you don't respect yourself because your children are disrespecting you. And so the world is constantly mirroring back to us what we need to work on. And we should not, but we do, we shouldn't shoot the messenger. The messenger is only showing us what we have to work on. So if someone offends you, you're looking to be offended. If someone hurts your feelings, you have to ask yourself, 
where else did I feel this experience? Was it my mother? Was it my father? Where was it in my past that I felt that experience before? <sighs> Take a deep breath. And that's another thing. One of the things that I have discovered is that people that are insecure, and I was there for decades, when we're insecure, we don't feel good enough. We are not affirming life in every moment. We breathe shallowly. Just notice, are you breathing deeply? Do you have anxiety? So all of those things are showing you, oh, there's something I have to work on. Perhaps I don't feel like I deserve maybe I don't feel worthy. And if you don't feel deserving and worthy, then you won't be breathing deeply. So one of the things we need to do is really breathe in and exhale slowly, expanding our lungs and our heart, open our arms to breathe in and exhale slowly. The more that we do this deep breathing, the more grounded we are in our bodies. And the more grounded we are in our bodies, the less we disassociate. Disassociation can happen with sex. It can happen in an argument when somebody yells at you if you have PTSD. Disassociation was put there from trauma in the past. And so we are basically re-experiencing a trauma when we disassociate. And so the more grounded we can be in our body, the less anxiety we experience, the less fear and worry we experience. So most of us, when we're insecure, are running away from ourselves. We are afraid to be in our bodies because we feel unsafe, part of the past trauma. And it will keep repeating. You can't ignore it. You can't shove it on the back burner and expect it to go away. You have to heal it. The past must be healed. It can't be ignored because it will come back and bite you in the ass later on in life with cancer, diabetes, um, let's see, cardi cardiovascular disease, and of course, intense anxiety and depression. The more we stuff emotions, the more depressed we become. Emotions are meant to be experienced, breathed into, we're supposed to breathe into the emotion and allow it to fill us completely and then we move through it to the other side. So that's where the deep breath work comes in. All right, so I'm gonna do this one more time. We attract the energy we hold. The energy that we vibrate at is what we attract into our lives. The higher we vibrate, the more we love ourselves, the more accepting we are of all that we are as we are, the higher the vibration of the experiences that we receive in the world. And so all of that comes back to us. We must take personal responsibility for ourselves, for healing our trauma and being happy with ourselves. The happier, more loving and joyful we are with ourselves, the more able we are to be alone. In fact, when you love yourself, you may be your best friend, you may be your best cheerleader, your biggest, your biggest um, fan. And that's great because when you love yourself, you appreciate who you are, how far you've come, all the experiences that you've moved through and healed, and then you can really enjoy life in a state of joy. So that's what I help you do. I've done that all myself. I did it over the course of 35 years. It's taken a long time to get here, but because I know the ropes, I can help you do it so much faster. And in January, I'm opening up a new program I'm very excited about. So you can check out my website, jenniferelizabethmasters.com. I have a new blog, how to experience the holidays with more ho, ho, ho instead of stress. I love you, thanks for being here, thanks for watching. And remember, loving you fearlessly is the key to loving life and experiencing the wonders 
of the universe manifesting in the moment and having a joyful experience while you're here. That's what you are here to do. I love you. Thanks for being here. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. I would be delighted to have you.